Why hello there, and welcome back to another GB Studio tutorial. Uh, once again, I'm going to be showing you how to do a fairly simple thing, a thing you probably are going to want to do, but might not be incredibly obvious how to do it. So what we've got going on here is we have a room with a wide opening at the bottom to move into another room, and everything works fine. That is, until we try to do this. Suddenly, we have a bit of an issue. Wherever we exit the room, we always enter the next room at the same place. And that's not really a thing we want to do. Now, what we want to happen is this. We want to move from one room to the other while maintaining our current X position. And as you can see, I know how to do this. And obviously, I'm going to tell you how to do it too, because that's how tutorials work. Alright, here we have our room, uh, just like any other room, with its trigger just like any other trigger, except that it's not. So basically what we have going on with this trigger is three things. The first thing it does is set the player's position into the variables player x position and player y position. Next it's going to set player y position to where we want the player to appear in the next room. So in the next room, we are going to want the player to be in whatever X position they were standing, but also at Y1. And lastly, of course, it switches the room. Now the second half of this operation is actually right here in room two in a scene start script. Uh, first thing it's going to do is check to see if player X position is not equal to zero. So if a value is stored in that variable, that tells it to initiate this whole thing. Then it sets the player position using those variables, player x position and player y position. And remember, we set player y position manually here. If you're moving from left to right, you want to set the x position manually. And then we set player x position and player y position back to zero so that this won't trigger when we don't want it to. And then this trigger right here is basically the same as up above, store the positions, but then we set the Y position to 16 because we want to come out here on 16. And if you haven't noticed, right up here, there is an indicator of which tile you are currently on. So 16 and whatever X position we were on when we exited the last room. And then likewise in room one, we have the same scene start script. Uh, you can just copy and paste this into every scene because it's going to be the same every time. And that's really it. It's just a simple matter of storing your player position, modifying it to reflect where you want them to appear in the next scene, switching the scene, and then having the next scene check if a position has been stored, set the actor to that position if one has been stored, and then set those variables back to false. And that's it. It's pretty simple, pretty short, and uh, actually I got some time left. Uh, you want to see some other cool tricks that you can do with this? Well, you know, I guess you can just stop watching the video if you don't. Now, let's say you have a game and you want to give the player the ability to, say, move between two different planes of existence or two different times or something like that at will. Well, we could have a situation like this. As you can see, we have a room here. But this room has no windows and no doors. Yeah, so how are we going to get out of this room? I mean, there's a bricked up wall right here. Ah, maybe if we moved into the ghost world. Oh man, now we're in the ghost world. It's really spooky and also that uh, passage is open. But as you can see, wherever we are and whatever direction we are facing, we maintain that when we switch between the two areas. And now we can go in here and talk to this ghost. That ghost doesn't have anything to say. But, oh, there's a lady here now. I sure did, lady. I sure did. Oh, okay. So, uh, she's busy. Uh, so I guess... You want to know how to do this too, and obviously I'm going to tell you, because as previously stated, that's how this sort of thing works. 
Alright, so here we are in this spooky room, but we don't have any triggers or anything, so everything has to work off of scene start scripts. We do have two things going on here. So first, what we have is we're attaching a script to a button. I have attached it to the B button. You could attach it to start or select just those three because you're using all these other ones. So what this does, it is going to store the player's position just like before, but this time we don't have to modify it. But it's also going to store the player's direction, which is basically a series of if functions, checking the player's direction, and then setting the variable player direction to one, two, three, or four, respectively. Then we remove the attached script. I don't think you actually need to do this, but it's one of those things that's probably just a good idea to do to be safe. And finally, we actually switch our scene. Now, the second thing we've got going on here is to set the position and direction of the player. So this time we are checking player direction, which remember we're setting to one, two, three, or four. So if it's zero, that means there's no value loaded there. And if it's something else, it means we have to do this. So first we set player position, which is pretty easy. We're just setting player position using variables with player X position, player Y position, and then setting them both back to false. Uh, that's not really necessary for this, but if you're combining this with the other scene switching techniques, you want to have them both set back to zero. And then we are setting player direction, which is once again, a series of if commands, checking if player direction is set to one, two, three, or four, and then setting the direction for each of those. And that's it, actually. It's uh, pretty much like the first one with an extra step, but also kind of simpler because you can put the entire thing in the scene start script, and then you can just copy and paste it into every single scene with the only thing you have to change being the scene that you switch to. All right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, if it was, then give it a like, I guess. And maybe subscribe. I have other content. Some of it is informative like this. Some of it's just for funsies. It's a mixed bag. Uh, I have another GB Studio tutorial, which is pretty useful. I recommend looking at that one. That'll probably be floating around the screen somewhere right now. So once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.